I wanted to get your thoughts on what's happened recently with the Department of Homeland Security designating the voting system part of our critical infrastructure, which I think to the untrained eye sounds good. Oh, that sounds like it'll be taken care of better, but it really kind of means that the federal government can now take over and keep secret all of our election mechanics, the code, the counting. Your thoughts? Yes, absolutely. So uh, one of the reasons why I'm here, Lee, talking with you today is because we want, uh, we, I, I'm out here pitching for 40,000 uh, citizens to s form small groups in their election jurisdictions and occupy your elections. Because yes, we think a lot of the stuff is going to go underground and be off limits to election integrity activists, to you know uh, audit monitors, and we're really worried about it. So we really, there are over 8,000 election jurisdictions in America, and we need a small group of people to jump up to this, uh, mm -hmm. to this call and, you know, form these small groups and get in there and start to know your election mechanics and the processes, what machines you use, uh, you know, get to know your mm -hmm. election officials and, you know, and get involved. It's amazing how much, if you just put that foot in the door, right? Just get yeah, that foot yeah, in the door. Yeah. 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 I, I yes. want to, I wanna, in, so, a minute, in a minute, I want to get to more uh, which those groups are and how people can do that. Uh, first, I wanted to ask you about the, a lot of money has been allotted to the states through the Help America Vote Act to upgrade our systems because many states are, you know, voting on computers that would make a speak and spell look like a technological marvel. Where do you think that money should go? Absolutely. So there's about $380 million coming down to the states. It's a little over $7 million per state, but they're giving more to populous states. And um, there are states that have to replace their uh, paperless electronic machines, what we call push and pray. You know, get rid of those. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we wanted a, a lot of it to go to verifiable audits. So voter verified paper ballots is absolutely a must. Then, um, then verifiable audits that are transparent and observable by, you know, election integrity groups. These are really, really important. And then, of course, uh, there's, you know, they're going to use some of the money for cybersecurity you know, at the voter databases mm -hmm. and, you know, to harden their, um, their websites and their software. So that's, that's a good idea, too, because somebody hacked in to quite a few election jurisdictions and tried to at least look at some voter database. So I think that's a good idea as well. But we definitely want voter verified paper ballots and verifiable transparent, observable audits. And they come in a lot of different varieties. So Yeah, you know, it, it seems like for everything we know that went wrong in this last election, you know, th there was no, the, the, the hack you're speaking of, even that was of publicly available uh, voter information and it was just scanning of websites. It sounds like almost nothing, but the actual uh, fraud, you know, and, and, and miscounting like you talk about at the audit uh, that we saw, it, 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 it's not, they're not dealing with any of it. They're not dealing with the actual problems in our voting system. It, it's totally outrageous. Um, I know that you're, as you just said, a fan of getting to paper ballots that are then uh, digitally scanned. I think some people say yes. that you, once you digitally scan the ballot, you lose control of the process because n now who knows how it's actually being counted. Uh, can, you, can you talk a little about that? Absolutely, for sure. So all of the electronic voting machines, all of the digital scanners, they can all be hacked. If there are insiders within election jurisdictions, and we think there are, then, um, then it can be hacked. And so we, you know, we want that hard record, that paper ballot. We do want them digitally, digitally scanned so that they uh, form a uh, ballot image. But you can't stop there, okay? And a lot of activists are talking about publishing the ballot images. This is great, but you can't stop there. You got to be pulling some of those paper ballots uh, um, by random and, and counting them. We need actual audits on the paper ballots and then comparing those to the digital scans so that we know that they're not being, um, they're, the digital scans are not being manipulated as well. So and there's it's lawsuits. a whole process. 
There, there's lawsuits going right now about uh, those those ballot images being publicly available, right? Right. That's exactly right. Uh, most of the lawsuits are just uh, save them, save them and treat them as election material because on fe in federal elections, they have to save all election material for 22 months. So uh, some of the some of the lawsuits are just save it, treat those ballot images like um, like election material. And then, like I said, we need this army of activists to go in there and then push to get these ballot images, um, you know, uh, published. So crowdsourcing the count. But even that will not be enough. We need those. A lot of um, activists are moving towards risk-limiting audits, where you're pulling at random from a pool of all the ballots, no ballots left out. Okay, they love to have special piles of ballots, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got the early voting, we got the you know election day, we got provisionals, we got vote by mail. So a random choice of all of the ballots, and then um, you're pulling some of them, and you're actually counting the paper ballots and comparing those paper ballots to the published um, ballot images. That's that's where we need to go, and we're yeah. not there. Yeah, we are not there across America. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that in a lot of America, at least 50% of it, uh, these ballot images are already taken by the machine, but uh, the, the the lawmakers, the officials, whoever it is, is deciding to you know either delete them or keep them hidden forever, which is the opposite of what should be happening. Those ballot images should be public property. So what is it people can do to make sure we get legit elections? Because I think a lot of people, and, and I used to be this way too, think, well, monitoring elections or election audits is something done by professionals. They're trained. They, you know, who knows? Maybe they went to school for it. I'm just a little old bus driver, a little old soccer mom. I couldn't possibly be involved in that process. So, so talk about that. Yes, you can. You can be. We have retired teachers. We have. Uh, we're. We are not heavy duty. You know, computer scientist experts here. Our group is just a group of citizens that got their foot in the door. And um, and but you do need to know what you're looking at for sure. So there are a few things that we do recommend. So yeah, uh, gather at least. I, I'm. I'm hoping that we can uh, stimulate five citizens in each election jurisdiction to gather together and inform yourself. Um, one of the books that we recommend is Code Red by Jonathan Simon. And this is an excellent computerized election theft in the new American century. Excellent. And then um, Democracy Lost, the report by Election Justice USA about the Democratic primaries and all of the election fraud that occurred there, too. And then there's a, a gentleman, uh, Dr. Alex Halderman from University of Michigan. He's a, got a lot of short YouTubes up on uh, the internet and you can watch him. He's excellent on computerized election fraud and making it really simple. So y just a little bit of background, okay? And then you would need to know what kind of machines that you use, what election ma machinery do you have, and verifiedvoting.org is the place to go for that information. Also, you need to know what audits, what kind of audits you have. Lots of states have audits, but lots of the audits are what Bev Harris calls fraudits, okay? So you need to know what those are as well. So there's a little background that you'll have to do. We do recommend that you reach out to, there are some election integrity groups in different areas around uh, the country. And um, Indivisible is kind of a little interested in this issue. Common Cause, Public Citizen, uh, they're very interested in this issue. And they put up a website called secureourvote.us. Okay. Secureourvote.us. And they've been having um, webinars. Mm -hmm. And those webinars are on their resource pages. And you can go through those. They're not very long at all. And you can really come up to speed pretty quickly. And uh, They've had excellent guests on their webinars. And so that is really helpful. So secureourvote.us. You can go to our site, Clean Count. CookCounty.org. Yeah. Clean count, cookcounty.org. Clean count. And we've Cook got a County. bunch of re 
Yep, uh, and, and, what we and, want, right? Sorry, and you were you were saying you have a bunch of a bunch of resources there. That, that that's good to hear too. Um, but these these right. audits, a lot a lot of people don't realize that these are our elections. These elections are not owned by the ruling elite or by the corporatocracy. And these audits are you know publicly most places you're you're allowed as a citizen to go and view the audit as a witness. And and a lot of people don't realize that we are supposed to be part of this process. And they would be more than happy if Absolutely. we weren't. Absolutely. There's no question about it. So citizen groups, uh, sometimes there's small hurdles that you have to come, uh, go over. You have to uh, register at your state board of elections or at your secretary of states. But, fig you know, figure those out. And those are all, every state has their own laws, right? And um, so you can, uh, you can go in. You can train poll watchers for election day. We definitely recommend that to, learn, to see how the, th um, the elections are being managed on election day. And then the audits, the post-election audits, are really important to go in and observe. So we are hoping that this army, so I'm talking about like 40,000 activists, come on, come on out. And we want you to go in in 2016 or 2018 excuse me, and, you know, learn about um, your elections before and then go in and ob observe the audits, at least ob observe the audits. Yeah. So 2018, um, there's things that you will see for sure. And uh, reach out to your allies right in your area. The League of Women Voters is another ally. So kind of start gathering folks together, yeah. educating yourself and plan to go in and um, e either be poll watchers, election judges, okay? Yeah, you can and, uh, and, volunteer and, 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 to be and election know judge. Your, and as you educate yourself, know your rights, because a lot of these, you see time after time, these officials saying, oh, no, you're not allowed to view it, or oh, no, you're not allowed to be in that room. And legally, actually, you are. You are allowed to view it, and it's, and it's illegal yes. for them to cover it up. And they either don't know that, or they don't care because they don't think anyone's going to call them on it. But Laura Chamberlain, thank you so much for your work. Uh, I strongly recommend people visit the websites you listed and uh, keep fighting. Let's take our elections back.